Hello friends, welcome back. Today we're going to be moving on with our quality assurance certification. We're gonna do advanced node and express. Um, in the introduction, I'm going to set up and deploy a node app, and then we'll set up, uh, we'll do the template engine as well. So I'm just gonna start here. Authentication is the process of action or verifying the identity of a user or process. Up to this point, you have not been able to create an app utilizing this key concept. The most common and easiest way to use authentication middleware for Node.js is Passport. It is, an e it is easy to learn, lightweight, and extremely flexible following uh, for many, and flexible, allowing for many strategies, which we will talk about in later challenges. In addition to authentication, we will also look at template engines, which allow for use of PUG and web sockets, for, which allow for real-time communication between all your cl clients and your server. Working on these challenges will involve you writing code on REPL.IT on our starter project. We're actually going to do it on GitHub with a actual deployed node app. After completing each challenge, you can copy your public REPL.IT URL into the challenge and on the screen to test it. Optionally, you may choose to write your project on another platform, but it must be publicly visible for testing. So start our project on REPL.IT or we can clone this repository. So I'm going to open up the GitHub repository in a new window and um, we can see that it's here. It's called Boilerplate Advanced Node. Yours might be a little bit different than this, but um, it's okay. So what I wanna do now is I'm gonna open up a terminal. Uh, so in the terminal, I'm going to um, change directories and I'm gonna develop this on my desktop. So the tilde gets you to the desktop and now I'm going to go uh, git clone and we're gonna copy this code here. Um, there we go. So you're, you're copying it from this uh, green bar right here. And now I'm going to roll this guy back a little bit. And as you can see, the git clone has created a new project on my desktop, and that's it. So now what I want to do, this is really important, just change directories into the boilerplate advanced node project. So now if I list out my project, they're there. Now my text editor is Adam, so I'm going to go Adam, period. And that's going to open up uh, the whole structure of the file in Adam. So this is our node app, and we'll get going from here. So yeah, we want to start it on there. And if you remember to save the link uh, somewhere safe. So we're going to go to our first lesson. Um, as a reminder, this project is built on here. Um, so yeah, I guess the first thing that we could do is deploy a node app to Heroku, right? So deploy, um, get started with node, deployed, getting started with node.js. So if you haven't gone through this before, it's pretty good idea to go through introduction, set up and prepare the app. Um, we're not gonna. We're not following this thing exactly. We're gonna follow it a little bit different because we're cloning the GitHub one. But so now I just want to run Heroku create, and then so this creates a Heroku app. Now, if you don't have Heroku set up, you want to make sure you go through the preparing the app and setup and things. But um, if this is the first time you're deploying a Node app, but we've done that before in this, so I'm not gonna go over that here. Um, check some of other uh, API microservices projects. So git push Heroku, it says main, but I just go git push Heroku and that saves me um, a bunch of time. So now the, the app that we actually cloned from um, GitHub, we're actually deploying it to Heroku now. And so it's gonna run all the deployment stuff and we're just gonna deal with whatever problems we find on the way. So yeah, this uh, application is now deployed you don't have to worry about this. Um, I'm sure that at least one instance of the app is running. This will just tell you if it's running. Um, so yeah, we'll just wait till this is done uh, being produced. Uh, while we're doing that, let's look over here. Now we see in free code camp, there's a testing file. We don't need to worry about that. There's a public file with client and style, client JS. Um, cool, I'm not sure exactly what this is yet. Style, it's cool. This is just silly, uh, some styles. And then we have our views. It looks like they have already pre-populated it with Pug. Um, we have the REPL IT, Nodemon. Oh, cool, there are Nodemons in here. So we're gonna be able to use Nodemon um, as, we're as we're developing. I'll show you how to run that one. Um, yeah, let's just go through the readme. It's fine to look at it here, but the readme is the same as it is here. So we can read through this. Um, we we'll continue with Express. Authentication, uh, the most common and easiest way of authentication is JS. Okay, sweet, that was what we just read. Um, after cloning, open the file in your favorite text editor and run these commands. Okay, so npmci. Not sure what that does. What is it? It looks like... Um, hmm, don't know. 
Anyways, it's uh, as this is going to be deploying. Oh, and I can note, notice up here, Get, uh, Heroku will give you a different HTTP uh, uh, URL for your app. And so if we would take that, we can put it into our URL and that'll give us our production app. So internal service error, not a big deal because we just started. Um, so anyways, so CI is done and it added 190 packages and we want to start our development server. So npm run dev. Um, cool. It says it's listening on port undefined, which is not very cool. But we can worry about that later. So if we go, well, you can't really open it locally if it's undefined. Um, so I'm actually going to press control C to stop the server. And then I'm just going to run Heroku open. And that you'll see that it actually pulls up the same one, the desolate Savannah. And so that's our production app. That's another way to open it. Um, cool. So I guess the first thing that we can do is take a look at the server because the server says it's running on undefined. Well, that is kind of useless. So let's go um, to our server JS. And so, oh, we have a sample ENV here too. And so the sample ENV. So one thing, the ENV is a environmental files which are hidden. Um, and so we want to actually add these here. So uh, our Mongo URI, <clears throat> our node environmental variable and our port are all different. I'm gonna set this to 3000 because I like, I remember it as 3000. It doesn't matter which port you choose, it's your local development machine. So one thing what we wanna do is we wanna rename this one. Well, I guess what we could do is instead of saying rename it, we can say right click and say duplicate, duplicate. And then instead of saying sample ENV, just make it point dot ENV. And so now our environmental variable is in there. Uh, if we go to our server JS, um, you can see that, let's see here, what do we see? Um, where is our port set? Here we've got our process.env.port or 3000. Well, it was going process.env port and running as undefined then. So now if we were to run our server, now I'm going to run our server with nodemon. So I'm going to say nodemon server.js. And that way, every time we save something here, it'll restart the server, and that'll save us a lot of time of npm stop and npm start. So now it says it's listening on port 3000. So I didn't change this, but what I did do was I added the environmental variable, which it's reading from there. And so now, if we were to go to localhost 3000, we'll see there is no default engine specified and no extension was provided. Well, that's not too crazy because um, I think that that's our first process. So here we say, um, the template engine enables you to use static template files, uh, those written in pug in your app. At runtime, your template engine replaces variables in a temp file, which actual values can be supplied on your server. Then it transforms the template into static HTML files that are sent to the client. This approach makes it easier to design an HTML page and allows for displaying variables on the page without needing to make an API call from the client. To set up pug, for use in your project, you will need to add it as a dependency in your package.json. Don't forget to add the name of the package and the version. Use package.json for some examples of the correct syntax. So express, um, so yeah, I guess we need to add it to package.json. And so we don't see it here. Um, keywords, pug, dependencies. Now it's not here as a dependency. So how do we know which version of pug we want to use? Express needs to know so we want to add it to here. So I'm going to just, I guess I'm just going to check the documentation. So uh, pug JS. Here we've got getting started. Um, cool. So here's the package, the dependencies here. And now if we were to go back over here, stop the server and then run npm install pug, you're going to see that this, there's four dependencies here, but once it's in there, there's going to be five dependencies. So um, that's cool. Now we can run npm install. What does this do? That takes our package.json and fixes it and runs our package uh, JSON, package lock.json, which will make it so that we have pug as part of the um, dependencies. And so now if we were to search in here, we'll see that uh, pug has been added and it ha adds all its requirements and things. So it saves you a bunch of time using this NPM uh, situation. Uh, cool. And so here they actually show you how to require pug. Um, how to compile it as well. Uh, so I think that that's what they're going to be wanting us to do. Express needs to know which template engine you are using. We will use the set method to assign pug as the view engine. So I'm gonna go back. 
I'm going to open up our uh, server.js. And we will use the set method to assign <clears throat> pug as the view engine property. So app. Oh, cool. They have it right here for us. So we want to make sure that we do it underneath the express. Where So here, first off, we're uh, requiring .env. That made it so that we can use the environmental field. Um, we require express. We require a database. We get the testing framework. And then we start the app. It's important that we do app.set after we uh, instant initialize the application. So app.set, and then set, I guess, takes a view engine, the string, and then we can just add pug in here. Cool. And then your page will not load until you correctly render the index file views pug. Cool. So that's just saying, now we have our view engine. If we were to do nodemon uh, server.js, we would probably still get an error here. Cool. But our error helps us. It says, fail to look up view. Load your view here in the view directory. And so, yeah. OK, load your view here. So res.render. I think they actually give us a hint as to what to put here. Res.render, you should change the response. This method takes a string of the file path. OK, so if we go views, pug, and then index is what we want. So here we can go uh, views, pug, index. And I don't think you need this thing. And I pressed save here right really quickly when I was done. And you'll notice, you might have noticed that the um, server restarted already. That's the benefit of Nodemon. Um, but if I refresh now, it says it failed to look it up. Interesting. So I'm just going to put a slash here. I wonder if that changes it. Hmm. Maybe if it's just, maybe it's just pug index. Refresh. Cool. That's what it was. So pug dot index. I mean, I wonder if you could do index dot PUG, would that make a difference? Refresh. Seems like that didn't make a difference. So why not be explicit about it? Um, cool. So now on our local drive, we're rendering the engine, which is awesome because I think that's what this one is all about. So you should change the response for res.render. If all went planned, your app homepage should log, uh, should will stop showing pug template is not defined and will now display a message indicating you successfully rendered a peg pug template. Uh, looks like the page is being rendered into pug in HTML. Awesome. Uh, submit your page when you think it's right. Now, our project is this guy, but our Heroku app has not reflected our changes. So what we want to do is uh, stop our local running server, and now we're going to use git to deploy our changes to our production web app. So I'm going to go git status. As you can see, we've updated the package JSON. Uh, we've updated, we've uh, modified a sample environmental variable, which isn't necessarily important. Um, and then we've also updated our server with our routes and everything. So I want to say, I'm just going to get add everything, uh, git commit. And in the commit message, I'm just going to say add pug template engine and then set uh, server to. Uh, ser server with functional uh, index path. Cool. That is just a message that you have for your future development self if you're looking in the past. And so now we can say git push Heroku. Cool. And so once this is complete, we're going to be good to go. But one thing is we're pulling the environmental variable already. So we want to make sure that we, oh, do we have to set the environmental variable here? Node env environment. Hmm. I'm not exactly sure. So it'll be interesting to see <clears throat> if our production app works. But right now, basically, my computer is just pushing all the code to Heroku servers. So there's some computer somewhere in Heroku. And then once it's deployed here, it says that it's good to go. So now this is that same URL. And if I press Enter, it ran. It runs. And so we're we've got the... Uh, our production web app is uh, using Pug to uh, render this index file, which is awesome. And now I think if we go back to our free code camp and we add our uh, URL into here and we run the tests, it should pass. Awesome. Okay, so uh, we'll keep going with this one. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this one. We'll see you in the next video.